All right, so here we have three parts, and this is what I'm going to be using to uh, like test the collision groups on. So I have a part here named red, and you know it's red, a green part named green, and a blue part named blue. So to actually open up the collisions tab, you go to model, then you go to advanced on the very right, and then you click on collision groups. And then we get this collision group editor, right? So I'm just going to move it like somewhere over here and, you know, just click on the default window. And as you can see, it says default can collide with default. So the idea here, right, is that we can create, you know, different collision groups and the limit is 32. And then you can assign, uh, you know, like different collision groups to different parts. And then like based on what you put here. So for example, if I were to add a group um, over here and I would call it red, right? And then I add a group and call it blue. And then I add a group and call it green, right? So now I have a group called blue, a group called green, and a group called red. What if I, what I wanted to do is to make it so that the red cannot collide with other red parts? Well, then I just uncheck the red. And then I'll do the same for green. So I'll uncheck the green. And for blue, I'll uncheck the blue. So now blue cannot collide with other, you know, parts that have the blue collision group. Green cannot collide with green collisions and red cannot collide with red collisions. So basically parts with the same collisions, like for, for blue, green, and red, will not collide. But default parts will still collide with one another because this is still checked. And of course they will collide with, you know, blue, green, and red. Um, as for this window, you know, you can like click this to rename. Although for some reason it's not, oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, you can just rename it like that. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, it's fine. You can click this to delete a group. You can click this to add a group. Um, you can do this to like get like a table view or a list view. You know, I prefer when, when it looks like this, but you know, you can switch around, see what you like. Um, and to actually like change a parts collision group, there are three ways of doing this. The first one is you go to a part. So you click the part. What? No, wide window. No. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I have the red part and I want to set it to be the red collision group, right? So I click on red. I click on, yeah, here we go, collision group, right, in the collision properties. And then instead of default, so so e everything is the default collision group uh, by default, right? Um, so instead of default, I'll just do red, like so. Um, so so this would work, right? So now, so now this block is part of the red collision group. The other way of doing this, for so for green, so you select the part that you want to, like, you know, modify the collision group of, um, so, you know, you select green and then you could, you could change it here or while you have green selected, you can just click the plus button. So in our case, we want to set the greens collision group to be green, right? So I'll have the green selected and then I'll click plus and then that changes it to green. So that's the second way. And the third way of doing it is, so, okay, we have red done. We have green done. All we need is blue. What I can do with blue is I can add in a script, right? I'll close this window for now. Um, and then I'll just say script.parent, you know, being this part. And then because, you know, collision group is a property, we can access it by typing in dot. So, so part, so script.parent being the part dot collision group is equal to, and it's going to be a string, right? So like we, this is where you put the name of your collision group. So our name of the collision group is, uh, let me just check that I don't have any like spaces on there. So, okay. So it's blue green and red okay because sometimes like i i had this mistake a couple times where i would make collision groups and then they wouldn't work because there was like like a space here at the end and so that's why it didn't work so just make sure you know there, there's no spaces that you don't know about um so blue green red awesome okay so then it's going to be blue right so we're going to set oh wait blue like this so script collision group is equal to blue because it's a blue part and so now if i were to run the game then let's see what happens. What is this? My camera is not on, by the way. This is terrifying. Okay, I'm gonna close that. Okay, okay, it's fine. That is that is honestly one of the dumbest features <laughs> Roblox has ever added. Oh, let me be honest. Um, but okay, let's see. So I'll go to the server, and so I'll check the part, the red part. It is red collision group. Okay, green collision group and blue collision group. Beautiful, right? So. So because like the script changed it. But now what if what I wanted to do is what if I wanted to actually like make my player one of the collision groups, right? So right now my player can stand on top of the red part. 
But then if I make my players, um, like, like all, all of the parts inside my player, if I set their collision group to be red, then as you may remember, like in, in the collision group window, we set it so that like, um, you know, the blue, green, and red collision groups will not collide with other parts that have the same collision group. So red will not collide, will collide with other red parts, green will not collide with other green parts, and blue will not, will not collide with other blue parts. So what I can do is I'm going to go back to the server. I'll find my character. I'll select all of these models, right? So all, all from the head to the humanoid root part. And then I'll set the collision group to be red. And enter like so. And let's see what happens. There we go. So now that because it's red, right? Then he cannot collide with red. But he can still collide with green. And he can still collide with blue. If I were to change all of these to be blue, and actually if I move the camera here, we can see, we, we're going to see him fall in real time. I'll change this to be blue. Like so, blue. There we go. So now that all the parts are blue, it's not going to collide with, you know, other blue parts. Um, and as, as like, like a quick thing uh, that we could script, what I want to do is I want to make a thing where we can click like one, two, three. So like when I click one, like all of the parts in the player character model are gonna be set to like the red collision group. When I click two, it's gonna be set to green. When I click three, it's gonna be set to blue. So you, you, don't, have, you don't have to do this. I just wanna show you like how you would use collision groups in like a real game, right? So all I would do is I'll just make a script inside local player scripts. I'll add the user input service, um, game get service user input service so this is just to detect whenever the player like types something and i'll do uis dot input began so whenever any input begins and then it gives us the actual input so the key that was pressed and then processed so if processed is true it means that the player was like typing while they were like chatting or something right so if the player was chatting you know we probably don't want that to affect the actual game so we'll say if proc meaning if player was you know chatting or doing like something else that wasn't part of the game then we'll just return the function. So we're not going to run it, right? But but then, so if proc um, isn't is, isn't true, then we don't return, then we continue running. And then I'll just say if input dot key code equals to enum dot key code. Uh, how, how would I do this? Yeah, one, enum key code at one. So if it equals to one, then, um, and then I'll, I'll just make a remote event just so we can send a message to the server, right? And I'll make a quick script. You, you, again, you can, you can skip to the end of the video. Does, it really doesn't matter, right? Um, and I'll just do local remotes. Actually, no, I'll do game. Dot replicated storage. Wait for child remote event. On server event. Connect function. So it's going to give us the player. And then I'll also it, like like provide the color as well. Um, so let's see. So what I'll do is, in the local script, if it's 1, then we're going to turn it to red, right? So then if it's one, then I'm going to take the events. So I'll make a local events equals game replicated storage. Wait, wait for child remote event. I'll do events fire server. And then I'll do red like so, right? Um, and then else if it's going to be two, two, then <clears throat> events fire server. And then it's going to be green, right? green and then else if input key code is three then event oh events fire server blue and then we end okay so that so now that you know whenever the player's key is pressed we fire the server then we'll just say okay so we get the thing if not player dot character so if the player doesn't have a character then we'll return end but then if the player does have a character then what we'll do is if color is equal to red, then I'm just going to um, loop through the player's character and then just set all of the, the parts to be um, to have the collision group of red, right? Or actually, no, no, you, you know what I could do? Because we're already giving it the color, right? We're already giving it red, green, and blue. And our the names of our collision groups are also red, green, and blue. Then we can just say, we don't have to check. We can just say, for you know instance value or no not instance for iteration value in player dot character get children so like for for like all the all the parts in the player character 
do. So then V is going to be something in the player character and we'll say if V is a base part, so if, if V is like a part or a mesh part, then we'll just set V dot collision group equal to color. So color is either red, blue, or green, right? So the collision group is either going to be red, blue, or green. And then again, because we're looping through the character, we're going to set all of the character's parts. You know, we're checking if it's an actual base part. And then if it is a base part, then we're going to set the collision group to the color. Um, and again, that happens once we press the numbers, right? So right now, I don't think I have anything. Let's see. Yep. If I click on one, so I clicked on one. Amazing. If I click on two. Okay. And then if I click on three. Awesome. It works. And just so you can see it better, actually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll make it print as well. So I'll make it print, um, print one. Here I'll make it print two. And then here I'll make it print three, like so. J just so you kind of have like a visualization of whenever I'm pressing. So, okay, but right now it's at default. Then I, I press one. Then I'll, when I press two, it switches to green. So, you know, we're not colliding with red anymore. Like so. And then if I, you know, I get press three, then we're back to green. And then oh, all right, we're back to blue. And then I can just do this, right? So I could, I could just keep pressing, you know, random keys. And then as you can see, our characters just getting giddy with it. Just thugging that out. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> um, that's, yeah, that's basically the use of collision groups. You know, you can, um, you create a collision group, again, by going to model, uh, advanced collision groups. You know, you can kind of, you, you can probably figure out what all of this means, right? Like, like what this group can collide with, right? So in this case, blue parts cannot collide with other blue parts. Um, you can, you know, change the collision groups by either just going to the collision group property. You can change it by having a selected part, going to the window and then clicking the plus button on, you know, whatever collision group you want to add to the part, or you can change it inside the script just as you would any other property by saying dot collision group. And then you give it a string, which is going to be the name of the collision group. And then again, this little game is like how you would use collision groups, right? So I'm going to delete all three parts. I'm going to delete the remote event, the script, the local script, and we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.